Hello folks! So we are going to continue our tutorial on making the Yorkshire cowl. So this is a pre-recorded uh, video because this week is school holidays for my six-year-old. And by the way, happy Halloween! Although that was yesterday. Now, um, here you can see three um, gauge swatches that I made and each of these uses different um, hook sizes. So we have nine millimeters, eight millimeters, and six and a half millimeters. And here we have the proper size, like the ideal size for our uh, gauge swatch. This is uh, 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters or four by four inches each side. Now I'm going to make another gauge swatch, okay, just so we can review on how to make this. For our particular project, the Yorkshire Cowl, we use a gauge swatch of nine double crochet for each row, and we are making six rows of this. So for, just to recap, I'm going to be using this particular uh, crochet hook size, which is seven millimeters. And we start off with a row of um, chain stitches. Okay. All right. So we do a slip knot, okay, like so. If you want to learn how to do a, a slip knot, um, that's part of the first project we we made using a, or rather, we were doing a. Uh, crochet purse. Now if you notice that I'm a bit clumsy in making this slip knot is because this is not really how I start off a project. I use another type of knot to start any of my projects. We'll get to that when we uh, start making hats. Okay yeah, so you have your slip knot and because each row will have nine double crochet we're going to chain nine times. One two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is our ninth chain. You can do two additional chains or one additional chain. Sorry, three additional chains. Okay, we don't count this um, two chains here as a double crochet. Okay, There's a debate about if we use that or if we count it as a double crochet or if we do or if we don't count it. But for now, let's assume we don't count it. So we're going to do nine double crochet for our first row. So again, remember, we have eight steps for a double crochet. We yarn over, insert the hook, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. So let's do it again. Yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through one loop on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through the last two loops. Okay, so now we've made two double crochet. So yarn over, insert hook into the next stitch, Yarn over, pull through one loop on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through the last two loops. That's three double crochet. Yarn over, insert hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. That's double crochet number four. 
yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. That's number five. So you just keep doing that until you have nine double crochet on your first uh, row. Now you may notice that this particular crochet hook is made of wood. I have these. I bought this years ago. I'm not a big fan of this particular one, uh, but it is what I have. I do prefer uh, metallic ones or um, plastic ones because they're a lot smoother. It might might just be the quality of the make of the um, this particular crochet hook, but. When I first, the first time I used them, um, my yarn snagged on them, so not very comfortable to make. All right, let's check. How many double crochets do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. You'll notice that we've got this two chains here. We don't count that as a stitch. Now, so since we're learning how to do this, let's just assume that we're not counting it. We can go. Uh, go back later to this issue um, and explore, you know, if whether we should count it or or not. Okay, so our turning chain for a double crochet, for uh, my personal preference is two chains. Some people prefer three chains as their turning chain. Okay, now that's going to be up to you. I I think it's really more of your experience, like um, what your preference is and how things, look, how the project looks, and also the tightness of your of your stitches. You know, if if you um, crochet tightly or you crochet loosely, um, that would depend on on those things. So right now we are making our second row of double crochet. And ultimately, we want six rows of double crochet. As a reminder, the reason why we're making um, many gauge swatches with different hook sizes is because we want to determine which particular crochet hook goes well with this particular project, okay, which is the Yorkshire cow. Okay, so we just made our second row of double crochet. Let's check again how many double crochets I just made. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so nine. If you don't like counting, remember you can always use uh, stitch markers. So just a reminder you could put a stitch marker on uh, every time you make uh, your first um, stitch of that row. So I'm on my third row. So I'm going to take one of these stitch markers and I'm going to attach it at the top of that first stitch. But since it's just nine stitches, it's not a lot to, um, doesn't take long to count the stitches. But let's say your piece has, let's say, a hundred stitches, it's very time consuming to be counting that much number of stitches. Now, for every project, the pattern will specify what the gauge swatch will require. Some gauge swatches will require you to make single crochet stitches. Um, so that really depends on the person who wrote the, wrote the pattern. Okay, 
So I'm just getting ready for our next row. So far we've made three rows of double crochet and then we're going to do our turning chain which is two chains. Okay, so we have our turning chain. This is the first stitch of the row, row number four. We attach the stitch marker at the top of that. And then we continue. Make uh, eight more double crochet after that first stitch. Now you don't have to use different colored yarn for making gauge swatch. The only reason why I'm doing this is so that um, for demonstration. Okay, so as you can see, we've got a stitch marker here. This tells me that that's the last stitch I need to make for this row. I'm going to take this stitch off and I'm going to use it for the following row. Okay, so I just did two chains, so I've created my turning chain and I'm going to make my first double crochet for the next row. So this is the top of my first stitch. Okay, so let's see. One, two, three, four. So I'm on my fifth row. And we need six rows. It doesn't take too long or it shouldn't take too long to make your gauge swatch. Again, your gauge will depend on the hook size, um, the thickness of yarn on the project that you're making, like what are you making, and also uh, I guess the author of the uh, the author of the pattern, like what what does the author intend that your project piece should look like. So we got one, two, three, four, five. See, that's my last stitch because the stitch marker is right there. So this is going to be the last time I'm going to be using that stitch marker because I'm on. I'm about to start my sixth row. So we're doing two chains as our turning chain, and then we are going to create our first double crochet for row number six. So that's the top of that first stitch. To be honest, you don't really need a stitch marker. I just wanted to show you just for practice. Okay. All right, as a side note, the original pattern for the Yorkshire Cowl actually only has one line or one dimension for its gauge swatch. It doesn't actually have the, the height of the gauge swatch. I just made that up myself. Okay, so what's important is the width of your gauge. I'll clarify that in a minute. just want to finish this. Um, this particular gauge swatch. Okay, so that's the sixth row. That's the last one. I'm going to finish that off. Okay. Take this uh, stitch markers. We don't really need them anymore. Okay, I'm going to line, up, line them up 
to show you what they look like. So that's nine millimeters, eight millimeters, seven millimeters, and six and a half millimeters. There you go. And this is the template that I'm using. You'll also notice that my crochet hooks are of different makes. That will make a difference actually. But this is just for demonstration purposes. Whatever hook size you have, whatever material materials you have, that's what you need to use, yeah? Okay, so we need to determine which is the best fit. Using six and a half, again, just to remind you that the original pattern only specifies the width of the piece starting from, let's say, you know, like how many stitches per row. That would be the width. So if I use six and a half millimeter crochet hook, this is quite small. Even though the high is very, very close, okay, this is still quite small. The width is too small. So we are not going to be using six and a half. The seven millimeter one is quite close. Okay, but not quite. Doesn't quite fit it. Eight millimeters, I think is bang on in terms of um, width. In terms of height, I think it's a little bit tall, a little bit quite long, but that's okay. Again, the uh, original pattern only calls for the width of the of your gauge swatch. Now let's let's check. So that's for eight millimeters. This one is nine millimeters. So it's a, a just a tad too wide. Okay, for a cowl or for a scarf, it it doesn't really. It's not a big deal like a little bit like a few millimeters off it's fine so if you want your your crochet your crochet piece to be a little bit on the big size size that's fine as well but if you look at the height of it it's quite big if you let's compare these two side by side the difference for nine millimeters with the uh, template is a lot more significant if you saw that so so the camel colored yarn that's using nine millimeters, the pink one using eight millimeters. So it's about half a stitch too tall compared to the eight millimeters. So for our project, at least for me, the way I crochet things, I'm going to be using eight millimeters. Okay, all right. So you determine what crochet hook you're going to be using depending on the thickness of yarn that you decided to use. So for my case, I'm going to be using eight millimeters. Since I'm going to be using eight millimeters, actually we're not go I'm not going to be using just eight millimeters because when we start a project like a scarf, I normally would prefer using a bigger size yarn, let's say nine millimeters, only for the start of the project. Okay, right. So let's start with the pattern. Before, before we do that, let's just put these away. So I've modified the pattern so that uh, I can use a different size yarn and crochet hook compared to what the original pattern um, calls for. Because the original pattern calls for a uh, super chunky or super bulky yarn. And I think 10 millimeter, I'm not quite sure, 10 millimeter or 12 millimeter or 12 millimeter hook. Since I'm going to be using uh, simply chunky wool, um, which is thinner than the original um, thickness of yarn, I had to check. Yeah? Okay. So... We are going to chain 60, 60 stitches or 60 chains. Okay, so again, we are going to start with a slip knot. 
and instead of the hook size that I just determined the proper size for it I'll, I'll use a slightly bigger hook size which is nine millimeters okay just for the start of the project so I want you to make 60 chains Okay, so I've made 60 chains to start my project. And then, as you notice, I took off the yarn, because that's it for this bigger, sorry, I took off my hook. Now that's it for uh, this particular hook size, which is not really the hook size that I really want to use. Now, the reason why I use a bigger size hook is because when I do a project, like a cowl or you know for for most part yeah and if we start with a with the same size hook with a chain it gets to like clump together or it, it's a bit too tight compared to the other stitches as a double crochet or single crochet so as you can see like for this example it tapers a bit inward at the bottom which is the start so if you use a bigger size, uh, bigger size hook, um, you loosen the, the chain stitches a little bit, yeah. So you end up with a a more uniform piece. Okay. So after chaining 60, you go with the designated um, hook size that you just determined after doing all that gauge swatches. Insert your hook in the last chain, and then. Try to look for the other side of the of this row. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. Because I'm going to connect the start and the end of this piece. Because I want to work on the round. Okay. To make our cowl. So I'm carefully just looking for how this piece should look like without this particular row being twisted around too much or you don't want it to be twisted at all um, if you twist it a little bit it's fine for now we're just beginning to learn how to do this okay and then once you do that once you find the start of of this row, this row of chains, you insert your hook. No, I'm gonna say that's probably to not the start. This is probably the start. Insert your hook, and then I want you to do. Okay. I need to do that again because my yarn is on the wrong side. If it takes you a long time to do this, it actually is worth it. So I just lost my piece because I put it in the wrong I put my yarn the wrong side of this first row of chain. Okay. 
it does it does um it is worth it okay so you insert your hook and then make sure you take in the right side right yarn and then you slip stitch okay so right now we're going to start working in the round now the second row so the first row is chain chain stitches the second row is a row of single crochet since we're working with a single crochet we need some sort of turning chain we're not actually going to be turning our work but we need a turning chain so we need one chain that's our turning chain we do not turn our work as I said again but we're going to be working single crochet stitches for every chain okay if you remember how to do a single crochet this is using US terms we insert your hook into the next stitch that we need to make your single crochet we yarn over and then we draw through one loop yarn over draw through two loops okay so that's a single crochet stitch so if we chained 60 we need to make 60 single crochet okay so reminder again how do we make single crochet that's five steps remember insert hook draw rather yarn over draw through one loop yarn over draw through two loops now do I need to use stitch marker for this project you could if you really want to but I don't think you really need to because um, the start of the of this particular let's say for each row is going to be so obvious you're going to say well yeah we don't really need a stitch marker it's really clear where where the row starts okay, you will see in a minute this is a very good practice on um, doing your single crochet stitches and your double crochet stitches so um, the next row after this row of single crochet stitches is going to be double crochet okay just want to make some commentary about single crochet and double crochet stitches um, single crochet they're quite nice if you want a tight piece but if you notice in our first project which is essentially just a bunch of single crochet rows it took some time for you to build the piece so yes yeah, single crochet stitch is very good if you want a tight piece but it takes a long time it takes a while for you to finally finish your project yeah the beauty of the uh, double crochet is that it is faster for you to build so your piece gets bigger faster compared to a single crochet stitch now if you compare the tight uh, the tightness of the stitches obviously a double crochet stitch will give you um, a looser piece compared to a single crochet um, piece is there an alternative let's say is there a middle ground between a single ground between a single crochet and a double crochet stitch absolutely okay, and we'll get to that when we go to our next project it also depends on what you're making it, it depends on of course on your personal preference for example you're making a winter hat versus you're making a, a spring autumn hat or sometimes even a summer hat you know 
how loose do you want it to be, how tight do you want it to be, also the texture, what that sort of texture you want, yeah. So that, that will all, all depend on those things. If you end up a, with a piece that's a little bit um, twisted, that's fine. Remember that practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect the first time round. So this is the first single crochet stitch of the row. So just check that your piece isn't twisted. So where's the top of it? That's the top of it. Okay, just to make sure that it's not twisted. You can always correct it when you're near the beginning of the row or the end of the row. It's both actually because we're working on the round. The beginning and the end they do meet up. All right, so once you've determined, see, it's already twisted, <laughs> that's fine. Once you determined, okay, that's the last stitch I need to make. Actually, this is the last stitch I need to make. You're going to slip stitch in the beginning. That's the first single crochet stitch that we made for that row. Slip stitch. Yep, so this row is done. Now, you can actually check. Does that fit over my head? If it doesn't, then your gauge is wrong. Or you didn't make the appropriate number of stitches. So if you did the gauge swatch and it's all in order, and you follow the instructions as to making 60, at least 60 chains, for the first row and 60 single crochet stitches for the second row, then you should be okay. But as a check, put it over your head. Does it fit your neck? If it does, then you're in good form. The next row is a row of double crochet stitches. The turning chain, without turning of course, is two or three chains. Again, that's a personal preference. So I do two chains as my turning chain. We don't turn your work, there's no need to do that. And then we make our first double crochet stitch where you made your turning chain. Okay, so that's what you need to do for your homework. Every other row you are going to make a single crochet. And the alternate row, you're going to make a double crochet. So that's it. That's, that's what it um, entails. This pattern is single crochet, one row, followed by a row of double crochet. What should be the final height of your project? You go look at the uh, pattern, but I think it's something like 21 and a half centimeters. That's the height. Okay. If you want your cowl to be a lot thicker, that's fine as well. You can do that. Um, you know, for example, you really want it to be super cozy, then you just keep building your cowl so that it's a little bit more on the thick side or like you know on the higher side. So you can just uh, scrunch it up, get a lot cozier cowl. All right, so this is it for today. Uh, have a lovely weekend. I hope you had a lovely uh, and spooky Halloween yesterday. And I hope to see you guys next Friday. All right, see you later. Bye.